morning class. Today, we will take up the topic leadership theory as part of the subject organizational behavior. We will understand some leadership theories such as trait theory, situational theory, and managerial grid. So let's start. The very first theory of leadership is called the trait theory of leadership. This theory believes that a leader is a person who has some set of traits or attributes. These traits or attributes set him apart from others. These traits can be inherited and also acquired. The trait theory also believes that effective leaders are those who possess such personality, characteristics or traits. Now we will understand some of the common personality traits possessed by successful leaders. The very first trait is achievement drive. It is seen that successful leaders have a high sense of achievement. That is, they put in high levels of effort and exhibit high levels of energy and show initiative. Not only this, successful leaders also have a high degree of motivation. That is, they have an intense desire to be successful. Not only this, they are self-motivated and they have the ability to motivate others, that is, the team members. Next trait is honesty and integrity. A successful leader shows a great sense of honesty and integrity. That is, he is trustworthy, reliable and communicates openly with his team members or followers who are usually subordinate in organizational settings. Next is self-confidence. Successful leaders have high le level of self-confidence. They believe in themselves, their ideas and abilities. Next is cognitive ability. Cognitive ability means the ability of exercising good judgment, strong analytical abilities and conceptually skilled. Successful leaders have high degree of cognition. Next is knowledge of business. Leaders have knowledge of what business they are into. Next is emotional maturity. It can be also understood as emotional intelligence. Successful leaders show high levels of emotional maturity or intelligence. They can observe their own emotions and those of others. And some other attributes or traits include creativity, flexibility, etc. However, trait theory has been criticized largely because some people believe that leadership is not only about having some set of traits or characteristics. Therefore, with the passage of time, some more theories of leadership evolved, such as the situational leadership style. This leadership model or theory was put forward by Hersey and Blanchard. It, it suggests that no leadership style is better than another. 
and that leaders or managers should adapt their leadership style according to the task and relationships performed in the workplace. This theory also relates and give an account of the maturity levels of followers or subordinates. Accordingly, this theory has evolved the following leadership styles, that is, telling, selling, participating, and delegating. Telling style is that style which involves high degree of direction and an autocratic approach. Here, the leader makes all the decisions himself and simply communicates the subordinates or team members what they are expected to do. The next style is selling style. This style is more or less similar to the telling style of leadership. Here also the leader makes the decisions and communicates to the followers. However, he is selling his decisions to the team members rather than dictating them simply. The third style is participative style or participating style. This style of leadership allows the leader to work together with the followers or team members to make decisions that are rational. Therefore, the leader supports and encourages the team members and follows a democratic approach. And the last style is the delegating style of leadership. It is similar to what we could say that the leader assigns decision-making responsibility to team members. In a way, the leader has shifted his leadership role to the team members, but he is carefully observing how they work. So th these are the four styles that are depicted in this diagram that is participating, selling, delegating and telling style. So that was the situational leadership theory. Now coming to the next theory that is the managerial grid. The managerial grid was developed by Blake and Mouton and this grid works along two axes that is the horizontal axis and the vertical axis this uh, leadership grid was developed in 1960s and it identifies five types of leaders that that can be depicted by way of a diagram so these are the five leadership styles uh, now we could you could see in this diagram on one side is concern for people and on the other side is concern for production now the first style of leadership is impoverished management in which the leader is uh, low on uh, people and high and low on uh, sorry production so this type of leader has very little concern for both people and production. The next style is 1.9 in which you could see the leader is low on uh, people that is he has little concern for people but high concern for production. This is known as country club management. The next style is in between that is 5, 5. This is called the middle of the road management. In this style, the leader is in the middle. That is, he has some concern for people and some concern for production. Coming on to the next style, that is 9.1 or 9, 1. It, it, it is that style which believes that the leader has high concern for people but low concern for production and the last style is 9 comma 9 uh, in which the leader has 
high concern for both people and production. And this is said to be the ideal style of leadership. So these were some leadership theories. So that was the topic for today. Thank you.